We're asked to use the graph of f of x below, graphed in blue, to answer the following questions. Number one, determine f of one. To determine f of one graphically, we find the point on the graph of f of x, where x equals one, which would be this point here. We go to repair for this point is one comma negative three, which indicates when x is one, the output or y value or function value is negative three, and therefore f of one equals negative three. Number two, we're asked to graph f inverse of x on the same coordinate plane. Notice here the inverse function is a function of x. If we take a look at our notes above, if f of x is both invertible and differentiable, then f of a equals b implies f inverse of b equals a. f of a equals b indicates the point a comma b would be a point on the graph of f of x, and f inverse of b equals a indicates the point b comma a would be a point on the graph of f inverse of x. We can use this to graph f inverse of x. Going back to the graph of f of x, because the graph of f of x contains the point one comma negative three, the point negative three comma one would be a point on the graph of f inverse of x. Let's go ahead and plot that point in green. This is one point on the graph of f inverse of x. And now let's find two more points on the graph of f of x. Let's use the y-intercept, and let's also use this point here. Notice the y-intercept is the point zero comma negative five, which indicates the graph of f inverse of x must contain the point negative five comma zero, which is here. And the graph of f of x contains the point three comma one, and therefore the point one comma three must be on the graph of f inverse of x, which is here. Now we can go ahead and graph f inverse of x. It is going to be the line passing through these three green points and would look something like this. This is the graph of f inverse of x. Notice I also graph the line y equals x on the coordinate plane, and that's because whenever we graph a function and its inverse function on the same coordinate plane, there will be reflections across y equals x. Notice if we fold the blue line across the red line y equals x, it matches up perfectly with the green line, which is the graph of f inverse of x. And number three, we're asked to use the graph of the inverse to determine f inverse prime of negative three. Recall f inverse prime of negative three is equal to the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the inverse function at x equals negative three. So if we look at the graph of the inverse function graphed in green and locate the point where x equals negative three, which is this point here, because f inverse of x is a line, if we sketch a tangent line to another line, we get the same line, and therefore this derivative function value is equal to the slope of the inverse function. Or again, if we want to, we can think of sketching a tangent line to the line at this point. It's gonna give us the same line and notice the slope of this line would be one half because if we go up one and right two, we find another point on the tangent line as well as the given line f inverse of x. So f inverse prime of negative three is equal to one half, but I also wanna take a look at our notes above. There's a relationship between the slopes of the tangent lines and derivative function values at the point a comma b on f of x and b comma a on f inverse of x. f inverse prime of b is equal to one divided by f prime of f inverse of b, but remember f inverse of b is equal to a, and therefore we can say that f inverse prime of b is equal to one over f prime of a. This indicates the derivative function values at corresponding points on the function in its inverse are reciprocals of one another. So if we apply this definition to number three, we can say that f inverse prime of negative three is equal to one divided by f prime of f inverse of negative three. f inverse of negative three is equal to positive one. We know this for two reasons. If we take a look at the graph of f inverse, notice it contains the point negative three comma one, which again indicates f inverse of negative three equals positive one. Or if we go back and take a look at number one, because f of one equals negative three, 
we know f inverse of negative three equals positive one. So now we have f inverse prime of negative three is equal to one over f prime of one. And let's go ahead and find the slope of the tangent line to f of x at x equals one, which will give us this derivative function value. So looking at the graph of f of x, if we locate the point where x equals one, that's this point right here. And if we sketch a tangent line, we get the same line. And notice the slope of this line would be positive two, because if we go up two units and write one unit, we find another point on the line. So applying this to our formula, we have one divided by two or one half, which matches what we found graphically. I hope you found this helpful.